Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This is a very old Boonton signal generator model 80. It is able to generate signals from 2 megahertz to 400 megahertz in a lot of different bands. So you can see all the yeah, see this is the last one. See that is a some span in the last one. There's a very special feel to this band switch. So something is rolling on some bearings and stuff, and then it goes like clunk, and then it stays there real hard. I, I mean, I need to use real big force, and then it comes. Okay, so this will be the frequency fine, and again, this is something Boonton does now and then. So this is the fine scale of something that is not in sync with the megahertz in the real world. So now we got 18.0, and here it's in the middle of this scale. And Let's go to 19, and then it's some. So, so this is just a banana scale. You're not measuring megahertz or hertz or any other funky stuff with this one. Uh, you need to look here, and this is what you got. There's some sort of a special um, mod to this uh, unit, so there's a special number here. You need to note when you're referring to this instrument for service or questions or whatever. So I guess there's something done to this that adds uh, or changes the, the features of this instrument. Uh, I think this is a, a pulse modulator, so it can turn on and off the output for uh, radar uh, simulations. You can turn this on and off. And uh, this one, you can hardly move. There's a part that's super sticky, so I will not be too hard on that. I need to clean this up and see if I can uh, make it work. This is the attenuator. And again, I feel this is probably a mechanical um, coupling uh, inside a resonant output chamber or something like that. Uh, and here is the drive pad. And you can move this a little bit, and then you adjust for uh, output power. And of course, we got the modulation and uh, internal oscillator can do 400 or, or 1 kilohertz off or external modulation. And this will be the RF output. I don't think this fuses the original. It looks like this has been changed. And it also looks like somebody was in here a few times some screws are not original screws see a little bit of hand painted job on top of those Ooh, and this one see how loose that screw is oh okay and this is not even halfway in i mean this is going to be real easy i think i need to open this before i power it up And this is the rear side. There's not a lot to see. I think if we remove this one, we will be able to uh, access some calibration stuff. There is a information here about Western Electric. So I guess this is before uh, Boonton and uh, Hewlett Packard joined uh, forces. I also find this a little bit. Do not connect to DC. Yeah. 60 cycles 117 and this is because this uh, instrument is from 1950 so, so you need to be specific uh, ac or dc and whatever <laughs> that is some weird label by the way yeah let's open it this sounds looks a little bit uh... and we are inside that was almost too easy since the screws more or less fell apart. <laughs> what is this? I really like this. Okay, that means we can easily open this. 
we got some funny thingies here at the sides connected to something and okay we got some wires going out here probably some light in the scale I don't know yet and over here we also got one of those thingies what exactly is going on here there is a Is that in 1961 somebody performed some sort of service, right? Sold a job on some. <sighs> and that is a step down transformer. So it looks like it is a non isolated type which is the most normal for step downs so that means it is converted to 230 volts perfect perfect for me this is the modulation oscillator bulb we got all the tubes mounted in a very very tight space some of them here they are a little bit loose in the socket when I see this I I'm very careful with the service of them never pull the glass but pull in the socket and uh, it's actually possible to to pour down some epoxy down here so if somebody else later want to service this instrument they don't break the tube so that is a trick to save this kind of tube for many more years to come you can see here they are loose and this one is good this is how it's supposed to be so this will be the original mains transformer and uh, I can see that somebody did poke around with the mains entry here and this is of course where the 115 it will be most likely 120 or something like that means switch output and the two meters so i mean i think it is ready to to uh to power it up i think it, that is fair to say that that is safe oh we got some don't you just like this we got some tools <laughs> nice one tool here is missing output meter zero modulation zero it's really really hard to read this let's uh, see if we can look at the bottom Before we do this, I want to document the text here. So you can just pause the video and have a little read here. So also inside of cover oscillator tube. Okay, so we got some instructions inside. So this is the bottom of the unit. And we still got those really fantastic DC, maybe those are DC filters or some kind of stuff like that. That would be a bulb in here to light up the entire scale, I would assume. And this is the, it was of course uh, the output Attenuator is a mechanical coupling device where distance to the signal source is the coupling degree of coupling. So this is a, a very normal uh, principle and it consists of two different systems. As you can see here, the main output and the calibrator output for measuring the power in there. And 
and this is modulation. So that part is the one that I can't really move and I'm so afraid to break it. So this I need to um, clean and fix. And we got some more magic boxes under the hood here. So uh, I need to remove this plate so we can have a look. This looks like a replacement. Because this is not American. And it is a lot newer. So here is all the back sides of all the tubes and all the good stuff with all the very old capacitors. Quite a lot of them in this paper wrap. This one is a little bit loose. But it all looks really, really good with the way the cables and all this stuff is made here. So that is really good. I was looking a little bit around for all the adjustments. We got a lot of really good quality uh, adjustments around here. This one is supposed to be output calibration. It says something about that here very hard to see because of this mains voltage fix and here's also a big instruction about replacement of the oscillator tube and uh, yada 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 so I think we need to open this can and see where all the goodies is so now I took away the first cover and there's another one so this is the, oh, I need to, to fix the light here so we can read the instructions for removal. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, important stuff with rotate this and rotate that and be careful about not to bend the this and that. Okay, I will be very careful. Let's have a look. What is in here? So somebody's been poking around in here with dirty fingers. Look how dirty that is. We've got all sorts of fingerprints. I mean, how can you do that? So now I'm inside the magic room of of doom, I guess. So we've got a super big rotary disc. And that is the big click and very hard to get it moving again oh. so there's probably some switches that connects to the different uh, oscillator or resonant uh, elements we can see the different coils up here for the different bands that would be a very fast one that one right right and that would be the slowest and then we go up I think this is a good way to show all the different uh, frequency ranges. There is a, uh, I think, down here at the very bottom. I don't know if I'm able to photo this, but down here somewhere is a. Yes, 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 yes. We can actually see it now. So down here, that part is the tube, the oscillator tube. I am somehow not able to get light in there. That is just the impossible mission. Let me see if I can do it with this one then. See, there's a very special tube in there. And to get access to that one, it is... I don't know. I think we need to follow all the magic instructions here. And it says something. Yes, shield is done. Yes. Uh, remove detector springs so that's probably those two springs you can remove but I can't access that because of this transformer but I think the idea is to lose the disc wrench making sure that there's not in contact with friction and, la, 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 la. and then we can move the disc with its coils attached okay so this is where we uh, take a wrench 
and then loosen this and take out the entire disc and then we'll be able to access the tube but i mean doing this is very very risky i could potentially um screw up something damage the anything in here so i think i will just assemble this again and see if it actually works or not before i i um, i risk uh, potentially damaging anything in here of course if this unit is not working or there's no oscillator output if there's let's see if there's smoke coming out of it i don't know what's going to happen here and then we'll decide if we have a better look at the tube Here we go. Now we can see the tube in all its glory by simply uh, using a torch. So inside those funny little cylinders we find inductors and capacitors. So that is of course filters for anode grid filament and stuff like that and they just place these units where they could fit space for them so that is of course the corners of this big round unit that's just the way it is and i also found another interesting thing this is a heater most likely also connected in series with a ptc or a temperature sensor or something like that or maybe they just heat it up and uh, this way um, it will be less affected by ambient temperatures if this unit is heated up, right? That's some of my tricks to add little secret marks so when I assemble things I also always put stuff exactly the right in the same place it's this way i know it's easier and it will fit i know it will work maybe i should re reel some of my secret tricks i just pour down some tiny drops of high proof alcohol and then turn the pot meter a few times back and forward look i can i can even yeah i can use a finger now now it moves that easy it's all it takes is alcohol and a few minutes on the shaft here and it's gonna go in and uh, convert the the old dried out um fed lubrication or whatever it is and it's actually going to stay good and nice like this for the next 20 years so that is a, a real fun and a real simple fix. So we are ready to power this up for the first time. Let's plug it in. Apply mains, nothing bad happens. 40, 90, 80 watts. We got a response. I see. We see output. And then, then I can adjust it. Yes, I can. Oh, lucky, lucky. So here's the idea. I adjust the. Oh, this is nice. I set the frequency here to uh, 3 megahertz as accurate as I possibly could. And uh, let's see what we got. What is this? I mean, aren't you a little bit impressed? How is that possible? This is less than 1% of error, and this thing is from 1950, and I didn't cheat. <laughs> this is crazy. Okay, we've got a little bit of output drift here. Let's get it back to the correct drive level. Yeah, but 
all this is working so how about this modulation let's see if that is working 400 hertz is that what is was expected and then yeah look at that 20 percent. okay so this is percent probably right and what have we got here so this is 400 hertz that means i need to dial down here quite a lot and not surprisingly this is am 30 percent, and that looks a lot like 30 percent, right Ooh. oh you can hammer it up that is a little bit weird why isn't the meter going see this is 30 okay now let me show you guys if i continue splat uh-huh well well we got ourselves a signal generator that works but okay that was th was uh, three megahertz one kilohertz yeah that's working too and off okay so it's am so far so good what is this doing okay so that is the external pulse so we need a pulse to enable the output so now output is completely off bada bing bada bum output good good i think it is a lot of fun to try and adjust for something here in in between and try to do it as accurate as you possibly can by only looking at the scale and then go to your scope or frequency counter or whatever you want and see if it's accurate i'm just quickly uh, going through all the different ranges so this is range c and i aimed for 18 and let's have a look i think this is almost 18 as well so this is range d and i am aiming for 45 and that is a little bit low when I switch between the different ranges, I need to adjust quite a lot on the drive. Look at this. E. So this is the E range. And then I have to crank up the drive. So now it's fine. Let's uh, go for 110 and i would call this 110. it's a little bit funny with the f range i don't know if you can see this here on the on the video but it looks a little bit like hand writing on the scale so this is probably why the scale is so amazingly accurate because of course they just measure exactly what it is and then dial in uh on the scale right so this is as far as i would say 400 uh on the dial and uh here is what we see on the scope i mean 400.7 really nice so what can it can it do a little bit more look at that so the what it even goes to 440 right so let's try and dial it into 400 and yes it does indeed so it actually delivers 10 percent more than they uh, advertise <laughs> it's accurate all the way you might want to have a look this is a nice heater uh, the power consumption is 83 watts but that is including the step down this is of course the voltage regulator that is very very bright wow it is beautiful and that is one of the tubes
but uh, yeah, we see some double as well. And that one was is probably a single because you only see the glow around like that. That one is also a double. Yep. This one is not that shiny, isn't it? I mean, I really can't see any type of. No, yeah, you can see a little bit on the bottom here, but that was really, really hard to see. But that's just how it is. So I think I will assemble my super nice spoon ton from 1950 and put it for storage. Thank you for watching. Please come again tomorrow.